What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Someone's PC. My name is Russell Parr and today I'm doing a solo video because everyone's either working, writing an article, which would be Dylan, or they're just a little busy right now. Um, and I found some extra time during lunch to finally record this video. So um, last night I did a podcast with the Super Rodcast crew, the ones that are part of with Someone's PC. We did like a two hour long podcast about Dallas Regionals, Sun and Moon expansion, and just how we feel about the game in general. Um, we also did a nice little giveaway of an Ultimate Guard um, Flip and Tray playmat case or a Raichu Pokemon, Pokemon playmat. Um, the ones you get for like top baiting day two, um, or top baiting, or winning one of the eight man winner mats things, or uh, judging one of the recent regionals. So, um, just to get into this, I wanted to do a quick video on what I believe the Dallas metagame will look like. I might update my previous article on Standard, but it's pretty close to the exact same thing as what we should be expecting, other than a little less Darkrai Giratina. So, um, to start out, the first three decks that you should expect to see and expect to play against and, you know, know these matchups over and over again are going to be um, Yveltal, Volcanion, and Greninja. That is not only the most played, in my opinion, but the top three decks in the game right now, um, in that particular order. So usually I play around with this whole, like, oh, I want a popularity tier list, so I think it's going to be possible. That that way I don't have to kind of, like, assert my opinion on a deck and how, I, how viable I believe it is. Um, but I think these three are standing out amongst the rest. So, Yveltal is always number one. Um, it won, what, five out of the last six regionals. It won the Intercontinental. Um, we see tons of very, very strong players piloting it um, and having a lot of success out of that. So, Yveltal is going to be number one. Um, most of the lists are going to look exactly like Prams or like Pendies from um, Fort Wayne and then Prams is from London, in case you guys aren't like keeping up with the meta. Um, Pram chose not to play Trainer's Mail. I think a lot of players are going to start doing that. I personally he personally have like done it since before Nationals of last year, when I played my Water Box list without Trainer's Mail, and I absolutely loved it. But um, as of recent, uh, I feel like the standard format's inconsistent at times, so I like to include them. Um, but sometimes I'll take them out for big regionals just in case I feel like uh, they're useless or the deck's already consistent enough if I play something like Hoopa. So um, Yveltal's going to be the first one. Um, expect to play against uh, Yveltal is playing two Enhance Hammers and a Flare Grunt. Uh, some of them now are playing Oblivion Wing. Some of them went down to one BKT. Some of them cut down BKT altogether. Um, there's like a big, huge discussion on Burbank and Heifonte in the past couple days where people are like, oh... Yveltal BKT is still good, but it sucks in the mirror match. Some people said it's amazing in the mirror match, and others disagreed back and forth. I think the way um, Flare Grunt and Enhanced Hammer has been integrated into the meta um, kind of makes BKT uh, a risky Pokemon to attach your energy to. So um, if your opponent doesn't draw either of those cards, your BKT's running them over. Unless they opened Yveltal EX and they went first and attached an energy to it. At that point, your BKT is kind of useless. So, um, it's it's like a trade back and forth. I think the Yveltal Mirror Match is very, very skillful. And um, when both players hit their max elixir, you can have a strong game um, with uh, tons of interaction involved. Especially around Garbodor and Parallel City and Fighting Fury Belt. Um, Garbodor shutting off BKT, enabling everyone to play Fighting Fury Belt. Or if, like... You make a pro play on your opponent, and then you lock them down with a Garbodor, thinking that they're um that like all their fighting fairy belts are gonna be safe from BKT abilities going down. So they start retreating with heavy damage on them. Um, then you pe you like bench a fourth Pokemon, parallel city away your own Garbodor, um, putting your BKTs back online, and then switching into a BKT and like taking a knockout or a four prize turn off of that. I've done that a couple times on my opponent, um, and I'm pretty positive Pram, Pendy, and everyone that's seen success with the Veltal will have done something similar to I mean it's just a cute play to do and um, pretty dirty play all you think about it so uh, I think you should be prepared for lists like that flare grunt is an amazing card um, super balanced because it's a supporter 
but it definitely helps the mirror match when you go in against when you go against a player that's inexperienced or they don't know how to um, attach their energy uh, correctly. So yeah, Yvelto's gonna be number one list, um, number one in the format. Yada yada yada. It handles everything. Um, number two is gonna be Volcanion. Uh, I personally don't want to play Volcanion, um, nor do I ever think I will, just because of, um, one, how linear it is, and two, I don't like fighting an uphill battle with it against Garbodor. Um, a, lot of ex a lot of experience and good Volcanion players um, will disagree or think that, like, you know, Vol Garbodor is not that bad, etc., etc. I just don't seem to have su much success with it in testing outside of, the, like, the matchups where they didn't get a Garbodor online. Or my opponent has a mediocre hand, and I just run them over with Volcanion. But it's very, very consistent, which is why it's showing up in all these League Cups. So Volcanion's strong. Um, most other lists are going to look similar to Ahmed's, who's including um, a Dragonite and Parallel City in their deck, just so they can regulate their opponent's bench size. And Dragonite um, allows you to recoup resources that you Parallel City do away. Um, Shaman, Hoopa, etc. So that way, when, when you get end um, to like 2 or 3, you can just recover back online. So... Uh, I think look out, look at his list, test with his list, or test against it, um, if you want to see, ideally, what she'll be play, playing against with the Volcanion. Um, third would be Greninja, people like Greninja, um, Europeans like it a lot more, but I think some Americans have started to see, um, how strong it is. I think Yveltal beats it, um, 55-45 with a Garbodor. I don't give it a heavy, heavy advantage, but if, if... If the Greninja player draws somewhat slow in the beginning and the Volto player is drawing mediocre, they just kind of run them over. We saw that time and time again on stream for London when like game one will go fine, game two, the Greninja player finally draws somewhat decent, bursting balloons start to take a toll against the Volto DX, and then they kind of run away with it even when their opponent has a Carpenter online. Um, and then game three, they open a lone Froakie and get donked um, in time. So like, they only have four turns to do it and they just get donked anyway. I think that's the reason... Greninja is on my is third in the um, top tier list is its inconsistencies because one it's an evolution deck um, and two you don't have the survivability like the other decks do I mean at least if you open Yvelto the X and you're dead drawing you ideally get a turn out of it instead of loping alone Froki you didn't get a dive ball um, you end into nothing else and then you just lose so um, Greninja's number three I don't expect Greninja to win the tournament um, I don't expect Volcanion to win a tournament. I expect Yveltal to win a tournament or a deck that directly beats Yveltal. But, um, yeah. You should you should expect to see Greninja and Volcanion to determine somehow. Volcanion will take top spots, though. It, at least one or two will make top eight, at the very least. Um, I kind of want it to win just so everyone can shut up already about it not winning, myself included. So, I'm looking forward to that. Um, moving on to the Tier 2, I think Dark Ride Giratina... Salamance is a very strong deck. I think Salamance is going to bring people to start testing out new ideas um, or bring back old ideas like Xerneas Break Fairies um, plus dragons or like uh, some kind of dragon variant implement to other heavy hitters in the game. Um, the Dark Ride deck, I, in my opinion, beats Greninja solidly, beats Volcanion very easily with Salamance. Salamance just absolutely devours Volcanion, especially if they don't see it coming. Like if you flip over a Dark Ride, and then they're kind of debating whether or not they should play themselves into like a 3 EX bench or 4 EX bench. And then you parallel city yourself to 3, negating their parallel city. And just kind of ensure the fact that they're going to keep a heavy EX bench. And Salamence gets to sweep them the entire game. So um, that's going to be fun. Uh, yeah. Darkrai, Giratina it beats those two, but it doesn't beat Yveltal. Yveltal BKT does way too much damage to it. Enhanced Hammer really, really hurts. Um... If your opponent gets the Sycamore away, their Enhanced Hammer and like Flare Ground on, the, on their opening turns, and you're able to get that ramp-up damage where you can take a one-shot off of the um, Yveltal the X, then I think it's a strong card, but um, or like it's a strong deck, but uh, I just don't see it being Volcanion or Yveltal on average with Team Flare Grunt and Enhanced Hammer um, so rampant in this uh, format. So if you find a way to beat that, or if you're willing to take that risk of trying to play around Flare Gun and Enhanced Hammer, then I think Dark Riot Giratina Salamence is a solid deck. Um, but enough about that. That's kind of been fleshed out ever since Orlando and hasn't seen much success since. 
going into the next deck, um, Mewtwo. I personally would probably play Mewtwo if I went to Dallas. So, um, if you hear my dog barking, I apologize. It's like daytime and people are walking around outside, so he might be going nuts. Um, Mewtwo should be considered um, for one of the top decks. I don't believe fairies can beat Volcanion and Yveltal consistently. Um, and I mean fairies as in Despair Egg, um, Mega Guardi. I think Mega Guardi suffers from having too many consistency cards in, its de- in the deck and in turn gets like clunky hands where you're stuck with a bunch of links and like Shaman and Hoopa and dead stuff in, um, on opening turns when theoretically you should be streamlining um, attacks over and over again. But it could just be the way everyone's building it. Uh, building it. Um, maybe one or two will make the top 32 cut. Maybe one will even make top eight. But I don't see it successfully taking the entire tournament. Um, Team Flare Grunt hurts it a lot. If you're in a scenario where um, you open your Guardian, you attach to it with energy, and then they get a turn one Flare Grunt on it, and then get to attack with BKT, then they're in a very dominating position, especially when the deck only runs, like, two Mega Turbo. So, um... I would bank on the fact that Despair Ray isn't that consistent, and then I would just play Mewtwo and say, if I run into it, I'll take the loss. Hopefully, I just win my first four rounds and get to dodge it all day. Uh, since I don't believe the deck beats Yveltal consistently, I think um, most Yveltal lists will f- either tie or play their way out of um, Despair Ray's uh, resistance advantage, and um, I don't think Despair Ray can beat Volcanion consistently. Um... For similar reasons, like Volcano is just so linear, and um, ever since they started playing Blade of Four Max Elixir, they're able to turn to Oko, a Gardevoir, and by then you have to see a Hex even to keep up. And if they open a Volcan, a Baby Volcanion, you're not you're dedicating a little bit of resources to take this one prize, um, to which they can just fight you with other Volcanion EX, which means you need like String Hex. And for me, I found that kind of it was an issue if my hand ever went stale during the first like three turns of the game so um, i don't think the spare is that good of a call and because of that i think mewtwo is going to be strong um there's a couple different mewtwo lists out there mewtwo metal which um nicholas played in um europe he made top 32 or top 16 i don't remember he lost on his final round to jay um Lesage, who ended up getting second with yveltal so shout out to jay shout out to nicholas they're both homies uh Mewtwo's going to be strong. Mewtwo Metal, in my opinion, is not necessary. I don't expect to play that many fairy decks. Even if you do, um, they're going to be fairy, Xerneas Break, or the other Gardevoir that's not the Psychic one. Um, the one that ramps up off of fairy damage. So, I don't think it's necessary to play. I would just kind of take the auto loss and roll with it. Um, the Psychic damage change is going to be very strong. I think that build with Garbodor consistently beats Volcanion, especially if you build it correctly. Um, and then last night I mentioned on the Super Broadcast was a, a fairy, like, Mewtwo deck with fairy energy in it. Um, I personally haven't played it, I haven't tested it, so I don't really have an opinion on it. It just seems like a, a cute concept, um, maybe inconsistent, we'll see from there. Uh, it, Mewtwo's good, I'd probably consider it, I would probably be playing it, just to say that for like the third or fourth time, I don't know. Uh, Pidgeot, Jolteon, Garbodor was good in concept i love writing my article about it i loved it in testing um but once everyone started playing this two enhanced hammer team flare grunt combo it just eats the deck alive if um they're able to get a flare grunt enhanced hammer turn against you when you don't have a dce to back it up the following like if you don't have a lightning dce to back it up um they can um, start to make a slow comeback against you so again that's where those decks fall like they have a linear game plan, lock you out, lock you out, lock you out, and then stun you off with Pidgeot. Um, or, yeah, with Pidgeot. But now that everyone's playing um, like less BKT, the energy removal, and um, the Oblivion Wing, you can slowly poke at the Pidgeot for a two-hit KO where the revenge hit off their uh, mirror move won't be too detrimental to your Velto game state. Plus, you have Pokemon Center Lady. So if they max potion you and hit you, you can just Pokemon Center Lady back and then hit them with um, a Y Cyclone and start controlling them from there. So I personally wouldn't play Pidgeot. 
I think some meta, some mega decks might be coming back. Mewtwo being included, um, Guard of War being the other one, the energy ramping one. So I think uh, you don't need to worry about Pidgeot at all too much. I think if you're considering playing the Pidgeot Jolteon deck, um, you you have to be aware that Flareground's going to body you, and at that point you might as well play a card big Energy Keeper, and just kind of deal with the fact that they're going to remove your DCE. And, I don't know, play, like, a special charge or something to get the energy back. But I don't think we're going to see too many of those decks. Uh, Carbink Zygarde is super, super slept on. One of my favorite decks in Standard. Especially after testing it for, like, 50 hours. But, um, yeah. The power memory, all cells power. Absurd attack. Really, really helps. Um, I wouldn't expect to play that deck at all at the tournament. I think everyone sleeps on it. Um... And it has a tough matchup to Yveltal. I give it like 55, 45 to them. Um, and then the Volcanium matchup is about 50, 50, depending on how you build your list. I'm going to play a, a bunch of Silent Labs in mine. So um, we'll be able to control like their uh, steam ups and stuff that way. Um, moving on. Uh, Got to kind of look at the other decks. This, is, this format's actually pretty diverse. And I'm kind of happy that the top three showed itself. Um, but, yeah, the top three just seems so inconsistent that it makes the deck whack. Um, Scizor, I wouldn't expect to play Scizor. Um, I wouldn't want to play Scizor. This is not his tournament. Volcanion's going to absolutely be everywhere, and it's going to get crushed. So, definitely don't play that. Um, it's way too risky. Even the Raticate build, you're going to have to come up with some concept to try and deck out the Volcanion instead of trying to fight them back and forth or taking the auto loss to Volcanion because I wouldn't do that this tournament. I just wouldn't take auto loss. Um, Vespa Queen, Zeb Strika, I put it in the same boat. It beats Yveltal. That's cool and all. It's the best deck in the format. Blah, 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 blah. You can't beat Volcanion consistently. Even if you play Vaporeon, if they regulate your Vaporeon on your EV, you're fighting an uphill battle against a deck that can one-shot you with a baby um, attack, with a Nani X attacker. And that's quite tanky where you're... Um, your Klefki have no effect on it, and you're forced to play Zeb Strike in order to deal with Yveltal, and Zeb Strike does absolutely nothing to a Volcanion player that's somewhat competent and doesn't bench their Shaman. So, I don't think it's Vespiqueen's time with the current meta. I think at London it was his time. Um, Alex Hill ID'd like a dum dum, and that's how he ended up getting ninth. I think if he was actually in top cut, he probably would have won the whole tournament. So, if you're anticipating playing Vespiqueen, test out the Volcania matchup a lot. I don't think you're going to win consistently. And if you're okay with taking a bad matchup to Volcanion, then what's the difference between you just playing Scizor or Raticate instead of the Vespiqueen list? Vespiqueen is um, it's vulnerable. It's more vulnerable to Garbodor. And if you have a slow start and they get a Garb online, it just shut off like three cards in your deck to become dead. Or uh, seven cards in your deck. The three, like three Klefki, two or three Klefki, and then your four unknown. Um, oh, and then your Shaman to go off. Oh, that's so bad. Yeah. That's, that's to be Queen scary to play. It's not a League Cup. That's a lot of it's a lot of rounds. With some Evolution Pokemon with no Battle Compressor. So, I don't recommend playing either of those. I think if you play against it, um, just hope to beat it, because you're going to lose to Volcanion throughout the day. Mega Rayquaza Solid. The um, non-Dragon one, of course. The Colorless. Uh, I think it's inconsistent. It took a bunch of collateral damage from Parallel City. I say it's solid because it's a deck that can run away with wins when your opponent draws somewhat blah. But I like to think of matchup scenarios in its, in its game state where I have a decent hand and my opponent has a god draw and how I can keep up with their god draw and potentially make a comeback. And that... It doesn't seem likely with Mega Rayquaza. It's more like the other way around. Like, um, I have to drive really, very well, run them over, hope they don't parallel cities me, or um, get a Garbodor line at the same time. And then now I have to make this comeback where it's like, oh, if you hit a Skyfield and you hit all those cards back and you get a Dragonite and you do X, Y, and Z and you get to your DCE or like Puzzle or whatever this to loop back your energy, it seems like a lot for a deck that's underwhelming unless it's drawing well, in which I would rather just be playing Volcanion or Yveltal, um, to have a consistent deck that can do, um, that, that can win and 
take away, um, make comeback scenarios in times when I'm drawing somewhat bland. So I like the deck, but I just don't see it winning too much in this format. Um, Raikou, Jolteon, Electro pretty much died off. Uh, the, again, the double enhanced Hammer Flare Grunt crap is just. Ugh. It's dumpstering these Jolteon decks. Um, so, maybe Raikou can get there, but I still don't see it. If they get some like solid Flare Grunts off against you, you don't even auto win your Veltal. It's probably like 60 40 now for you. And while that sounds strong. It's not auto in like a 90-10, like a, like a Greninja versus a Zygarde and Expanded or something, so or Volcanion versus a Scizor, but I would expect to play against Raikou Jolteon. Um, I think Plumox is very good. That's definitely a deck that's going to be slept on, not played as much, and um, takes a good pilot in order to see success with it, which is why Sam Hugh always does so well when he's playing that cancerous piece of crap deck. Um, piece of crap as in like... I hate the fact that it exists, and I think it lowers the intelligence of everyone in the game involved. Even the people playing next to you, their intelligence gets lowered because all you're doing is locking someone out of items and hitting them with some stupid attack that, um, you know, takes them out of the game for no reason. Real dumb. But the deck is good. Uh, easily, easily my tier two. Um, not in terms of popularity, but just in terms of, like, uh, strength of the deck. It draws somewhat weird. And when you draw weird or awkward, you need to have the knowledge and experience to know how to play out of it, which is what I believe Sam has, even though I I haven't seen him play. And I just watched his one game on stream at Worlds, which is a whole different format to go, um, playing against Dylan, Trev versus uh, the box. So, yeah. Um, if he made it that far and that, that deep with a uh, Worlds run, um, against a bunch of beast players then you know i'll pay my respects and I, I think he's definitely um a good pilot with it if not the best with it right now so uh, i'm trying to think of what's left that should be most of it mm, yeah yeah that looks like it's it oh rainbow road that deck draws like crap don't play that don't do it to yourself you're gonna get all these wins, and then at the end of the day, you're gonna lose <laughs> because because you drew like your Calvantulas in your opening hand. You had to just sick more them away, and you never even saw Jolt like because it's prized because you're playing too many Pokemon or like like the Pokemon that you'll never attack with. So yeah, I w I wouldn't recommend playing that. It's trust it very very stupidly. Um, yeah, that should be it. Uh, good luck to everyone in Dallas. I hope the stream's gonna be sick. Um, shout out to Jeremy John. I know he's going to be on commentary. I believe um, Travis is also going to be on commentary with him. So they're two homies. If you see them, um, say what's up. You know, say hi. Hopefully they'll put you on stream. And uh, I'm probably going to do some streaming while they're streaming at the same time, if not trying to get into some VOD reviews. But back to finishing up this article. Dylan's article should be out sometime today. And... I am looking forward to the new year and everything we have coming to you guys from someone's PC. So thank you for watching and shout out to our um, sponsors, uh, Ultimate Guard. And I forgot I can't mention the other one yet because it's not finalized. So I'm not even going to edit that out. I'm way too lazy to talk about it. Um, thanks, everybody, and have a good day.